Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and arrived in the Snowden Forest and we met Sans and Papyrus and a couple of other monsters and we came across this spaghetti. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on throughout the forest, see what other monsters we meet, see what else we can find, and yeah, just see what we can do along the way. Let's continue. Warning, dog marriage. Quite the weird sign. Oh. Okay, we have Ice Cap and Jerry. So first for... First, let's deal with Ice Cap. Okay, spare Ice Cap. Well, can you give me a ride home? With Jerry here, we're going to go ahead and... Let's check him. Everyone knows Jerry. Makes the text two seconds longer. Oh. Our only option here is ditch, I guess. Even the other monsters ditch Jerry when it looks away. I don't even have Jerry in my notes, so I wasn't really sure how to deal with him. I don't know. Anyways, right here we have snow covering this map right here. And we have an X up in the top right corner. So let's go ahead and look at the top right corner over here. There's this spot right here that's quite weird because it doesn't have anything. If we press Z, there's a switch hidden in the snow. Click. And that leads to the opening of the puzzle. So now let's go ahead and move forward. What's that smell? Where's that smell? If you're a smell, identify your smell. -th. Hmm, here's that weird smell. It makes me want to eliminate. Eliminate you. This are the, these are the Dogai, also known as Dogami and Dogaressa. So first let's, we wanna go ahead and roll around. Roll around in the dirt and snow. You smell like a weird puppy. Number two, Nuzzle Champs 98. Of course we were second. I wonder who the first were. The dogs w may want to re-smell you, so let's go ahead and let them do that. The dogs sniff you again. After rolling in the dirt, you smell all right. What? Smells like a... Are you actually a little puppy? You have these large... I don't even know what these are, but they make a heart. I think that you may be a lost puppy. Now we want to go ahead and pet Dogami. You pet Dogami. Wow, pet by another pup. Well, don't leave me out. We have this attack once again. And then we want to pet Dogaressa. What about me? A dog that pets dogs. Amazing. Okay, now we can spare him. Dogs can pet other dogs? A, world, a new world has opened up for us. Thanks, weird puppy. And they're off. So that's the dog marriage that we were told about. Turn every X into an O, then press the switch. What? How did you avoid my trap? And more importantly, is there any left for me? What do you tell Papyrus about his spaghetti? I ate it. Really? Wowee! No one's ever enjoyed my cooking before. Well then, fret not, human. I, Master Chef Papyrus, will make you all the pasta you could ever want. <laughs> yeah. You did a backwards laugh there for a second. So we want to do just as the sign says. Turn every X into an L, then press the switch. Pretty simple. My brother started a sock collection recently. How saddening. Sometimes I wonder what he would do without such a cool guy taking care of him. Yeah. Human. Hmm, how do I say this? 
You were taking a long time to arrive, so I decided to improve this puzzle by arranging the snow to look more like my face. Unfortunately, the snow froze to the ground. Now the solution is different. And as usual, my lazy brother is nowhere around. I suppose what I am saying is, worry not, human. I, the great papyrus, will solve this conundrum. Then we can both proceed. Meanwhile, feel free to try to the puzzle yourself. I'll try not to give away the answer. So I'll go ahead and how to show you how to solve this because there's actually two ways to solve this. The first way is by actually doing the puzzle. You want to, I like how Papyrus just slides into frame there. I want to go around like, yeah, like this. Exit. Wrap all the way around. And you have free access to these two X's. However, there's another way of solving it. If we talk to Papyrus. So, you want a hint, huh? Well, I've been looking at the puzzle, and I think the solution is to turn all the X's into O's. You should try that. Ask again for more great hints. Maybe solving the last puzzle again will help. Ask again for more great hints. Eureka! I figured out the puzzle. You seem like you're having fun, though. Do you absolutely, absolutely want the solution? Do you absolutely, absolutely want the answer? If we say yes, the solution is... Please imagine a drum roll in your hand. That tree over there has a switch on it. Check it outie. There's a switch on the trunk of this tree. Press it. Yep. Figure out the puzzle. Okay. So enthused by your enthusiasm, you can do it, human. But now since we've gone ahead and solved that puzzle, wait, I think talking to Papyrus accidentally reset it. Wait. Oh, do I have to press the button here? Okay. Wow, you solved it. My advice helped. It really helped you. Incredible. I'm impressed. You must care about puzzles like I do. Well, I'm sure you'll love the next puzzle then. It might even be too easy for you. <laughs> so, one weird thing about me is that I can't roll my R's, but I can kind of do it whenever I'm doing Papyrus' voice. Like, I am the great Papyrus, like that. I don't know, it's weird. Good job on solving it so quickly. You didn't even need my help. Which is great, because I love doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> hey, it's the human. You're gonna love this puzzle. It was made by the great Dr. Alfies. You see these tiles? Once I throw this switch, they will begin to change color. Each color has a different function. Red tiles are impassable. You cannot walk on them. Yellow tiles are electric. They will electrocute you. Green tiles are alarm tiles. If you step on them, you will have to fight a monster. Orange tiles are orange scented. They will make you smell delicious. Blue tiles are water tiles. Swim through if you like, but if you smell like oranges, the piranhas will bite you. Also, if a blue tile is next to a yellow tile, the water tile will also zap you. Purple tiles are slippery. You will slide to the next tile. However, the slippery soap smells like lemons, which piranhas do not like. Purple and blue are okay. Finally, pink tiles. They don't do anything. Step on them all you like. How is that? Understand? So I'm gonna say of course here. Great! Then there's one last thing. This puzzle is entirely random. When I pull this switch, it will make a puzzle that has never been seen before. Not even I will know the solution. Yeah! <laughs> Get ready! We get this incredibly easy puzzle. Actually, that spaghetti from earlier, it wasn't too bad for my brother. Since he started cooking lessons, he's been improving a lot. I bet if he keeps it up next year, he'll even make something edible. 
the machine isn't working. Interesting thing about that puzzle is that if you say you don't understand, Papyrus will repeat the instructions completely mixed up, and then if you say you understand it even less, he'll just say, hey, you can do this puzzle whenever you want, and he'll walk away, leaving you to just go across the puzzle, and even if you try to throw the switch, you can't. Also, remember how in the last episode we pet that dog so much that he, you know, grew a bunch? Well, afterwards, he was inspired to create some snow dogs. A dog just rushed in here filled with inspiration. It kept trying to build a snow dog that express, expressed its own emotions. But as it built, it kept getting more excited about the sculpture. Its neck got longer and longer and it added more and more snow until... It was rather sad to watch, but I couldn't turn away. Knowing that the dog will never give up trying to make the perfect snow dog, it fills you with determination. Oh, this is an interesting puzzle. First, I want to go down here because we have two snow sculptures. It's a snow papyrus. It's a lump of snow with the word sands written in red marker. <laughs> So with this ice puzzle, the way that you want to solve it... No, I didn't do it correctly. I know that speedrunners have a really cool way of solving this puzzle a lot faster. I think you have to do some diagonal movements like that. No, uh, gosh dang it. Okay, I won't try any speed... Okay, I just failed there. I won't... I won't try any speed run strats from now on. I'll just try to do it the normal way. It's not like I really know any speed run strats anyway. And there we go. I finally did it. Now we can move across this. And rand it'll randomly generate a, uh, not randomly generate, it has a couple of different snow things that can be on top of your character's head, but uh, I, I got a real lame one. It was just like a pile of snow, but it could be a bunch of fun different shapes. Hey, Sans. What's up? Say, are you following me? This is Gift Trot. So we're gonna learn about this guy a little bit later, but what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and just undecorate him. Remove the box of non-dog related raisins. That's a little better. Okay, one, oh. Okay, yeah, that's one of his attacks where he, uh, it's like the cup and ball thing where one of them is blue and you have to keep your eye on it. Here's one where, I guess it's supposed to be snow. Undirect decorate him one more time. You remove the lenticular bookmark of a smug teen wink winking. I wonder if that's a reference to something. A weight has been lifted. And now we can spare him. That's nice. So interesting thing, if we enter this cave right here, we see these four mushrooms. And I know that there's something here. I forget exactly what, I'll mention it in post. Or if it's like spoilers for something, then I'll mention it later on in the series. Either way, we're just going to leave this alone for now. Another interesting thing is if we go over to the left here, we can see a little house down there. And if we wait long enough... A little guy will walk out. I think all he does is just walk back and forth and then walk back inside. But I don't know, it's just interesting. It's just some attention to detail there. Even making the little houses in the background have something going on with them just shows how much how much care was put into this game. It's a snow poth. And this is a snow poth. This, however, is a snow poth. Surprisingly, it's a snow poth. Woof. What a tiny doghouse. Snowpoff. 
Is it really a snow puff? Behold, a snow puff. Eh? There's 30 G inside this. What is it? It's a snow puff. This is Greater Dog. You call the Greater Dog. It bounds towards you, flecking slobber into your face. This battle's got some... funny music, but uh... I'm not sure if I'll be able to let you guys listen to it too much because my... A uh, trailer for this Let's Play that I just uploaded recently as of recording this got, you know, copyright claimed for having Undertale music in it. Even though I was talking over it and it wasn't that loud, so, I don't know, copyright's weird. Curls up in, in your lap as it is pet by you. It gets so comfortable it falls asleep. Then it wakes up. It's so excited. You want to dodge its barks there, and then you want to go ahead and play with it. You make a snowball and throw it for the dog to fetch. It splats on the ground. Greater Dog picks up all the snow in the area and brings it to you. Now Dog is very tired. It rests its head on you. Now we just gotta keep petting it. As you pet the dog, it sinks its entire weight into you. Your movement's slow but you still haven't pet enough. So it mentioned that your movement's slow, and that's actually true. You move a little bit slower here. Now you just want to pet it again. Pet decisively. Pet capacity reaches 100%. The dog flops over with its, with its legs hanging in the air. Greater dog is contented. And we won. <laughs> now this bridge human this is your final and most dangerous challenge behold the gauntlet of deadly terror when I say the word it will fully activate cannons will fire spikes will sling swing blades will slice each part will swing violently up and down. Only the tiniest chance of victory will remain. Are you ready? Because I am about to do it. Well, what's the hold up? Hold up? What hold up? I'm, I'm about to activate it now. That, uh, doesn't look very activated. Well... This challenge, it seems, may be too easy to defeat the human with. Yeah, we can't use this one. I am a skeleton with standards. My puzzles are very fair, and my traps are expert, expertly cooked. But this method is too direct, no class at all. Away it goes. Phew. What are you looking at? This was another decisive victory for, for Papyrus. Nyeh. Yeah. Heh. Huh. Heh? I don't know what my brother's going to do now. If I were you, I would make sure I understand blue attacks. Blue stop sign. And welcome to Snowden Town. First, I want to go ahead and save. The sight of such a friendly town fills you with determination. What followed was a couple of minutes of epic inventory management. I thought I'd go ahead and skip it for you. If you're a fan of typical RPGs, you might be saying, well, why aren't you just going to go ahead and, you know, take all of your stuff and sell it, sell it to a shop, to the shop right there? Well, let's go ahead and walk into the shop. Hello, traveler. How can I help you? We try to sell. Huh? 
Sell something? Does this look like a pawn shop? I don't know how it works where you come from, but if I started spending money on old branches and used bandages, I'd be out of business in a jiffy. Take your time. So right here we have a few good items. We have the Manly Bandana, which I'm going to go ahead and buy. It has abs on it. That's great. I, uh, I think I'll go ahead and also buy the, <laughs> get it? I'm going to buy the bicycle. And also bicycle in itself is a pun because it's like, you know, two uh, popsicles, but you know, so it's a bicycle, but like a bike. You, you get the pun. I don't know why I'm explaining it. I'll buy a couple of those because th those are actually really good healing items because they heal almost all of our HP and go ahead. They all they also come in two different they work as two healing items so you can reuse you can reuse the bicycle uh, after you use it once so it basically works as two healing items. I'm gonna get rid of the faded ribbon. And I think that's good. So now I'm going to go ahead and end off the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on through Snowden Town and see what kind of friendly folk we can meet. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.